Mego makes a maniac. This is your look at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 8 inch action figure of Leatherface. Marty Abrams, aka the father of the action figure, has relaunched these figures in response to an overwhelming demand. Mego Corporation was started by his father David Abrams in 1954, named by his younger brother Howard, who would say, Me Go Too. Howard later became head of sales for the company. Mego Corporation has sold over 20 million of his now standard 8 inch action figures worldwide, and Mego Corporation is proud to take over that heritage today. Figure before we sink our teeth into Leatherface, the first thing we do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Now, Migos are always known for producing 8-inch tall action figures, and Leatherface from the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre is no exception. Leatherface stands exactly 8 inches in height. We can switch that to centimeters, revealing that the figure is about 20 and a half, 20.3 centimeters to be exact. Looking at Leatherface's accessories, he comes included with one chainsaw, and it would be a bit strange if he didn't come included with one. The chainsaw is decently done here in molded yellow plastic. Admittingly, I feel like the blade probably could be a little bit longer, following it to the end of my thumb. I probably would have given it another half the length, but uh, they did definitely go a little on the short side, I feel, for the chainsaw. The chainsaw is all molded in yellow plastic, with the exceptions of the handle here that looks like it's a separate piece that's been painted in black as well as the pull string and the front handle has all been painted in black. And while this is a harder plastic, the part that isn't is the teeth. These are softer plastic and they've been painted nicely in a metallic silver. To get this into his hand is not the easiest thing because most Mego figures tend to have let me just go ahead and pick up the figure and show you more prone to having these like relaxed palms. They're not really serving as perfectly gripping hands they're just enough to barely hold on to the chainsaw let me go ahead and show you go ahead and move the arms up let's bring in the chainsaw here now you can attach it obviously on the top handle here that i'm pointing right now to the hand and of course the back handle the easiest one i find to do is just kind of get it onto the thumb first now, one thing I did have some difficulty with when it comes to this particular chainsaw as I get one hand in place is that this handle. Now, this is why I think this is a separate piece that they apply because you can see it's come loose from the little peg socket where that's supposed to fit in place. Probably ultimately you're just going to glue that in place. I don't feel like I'm ruining the figure necessarily. I'm just literally gluing the handle so it's not going to be going anywhere. And then one, when that is on one side, then you can go ahead and just sort of hold on to the hand with that one hand of yours. And then go ahead and take the finger grip and fit it inside the handle, just like so. A lot of times I've noticed when I've done this, I seem to think I get one hand in place and then sure enough, the other hand falls off. But eh, there you can see, you can get Leatherface holding the chainsaw. It is a little difficult because like I said, the base on the hands that he has and the fact that the handles on the chainsaw are so thick, it does cause a little bit of difficulty when it comes to getting his hands in place. When it's all there and it's finally good to go, obviously this is going to be the way I'm going to display the figure with chainsaw in wielded hand. Anyways, we'll go ahead and remove this. I do think I am going to glue this though, just because that handle falls off way too frequently. I'm going to put that to the side though. and let's get a closer look at Leatherface himself. Now this isn't based on the original 70s classic. Instead, it's based on what I feel is just an equally classic 2003 remake. This is the Leatherface, of course, that's in that movie that would follow up after that with the prequel, which I thought was also a pretty good Leatherface movie. The face itself, let's talk a little bit about that for a second. You sort of have to go into collecting Migos, as I have in the past, with sort of a, not low expectation, but you sort of know the kind of stuff that you're getting with Mego. Somewhat simplistic designs, giving you the rough basic idea of what these characters look like. Like, does that look like Leatherface? Screen accurate Leatherface? I would say necessarily no. But if you imagined what a vintage figure of Leatherface could potentially have looked like, I would say this does a pretty good job of that. You can see the stitches running from the eye, the eye socket out and then connecting the rest of the railroad track of stitches all the way around to the front of his face. I always really like the design of this mask from the 2003 film. And I think, again, as it goes for the simplicity of Mego, it's a pretty successful looking head sculpt. 
We've got the darker areas of the eyes, more in that painted in brown, while the rest of it is kind of kept to this creamy beige color. Short, the exception, I would say, to the rule is the stitches that have been painted in like a tan color. You can see as well the visible teeth, the part on the top of the hair. Again, like even if you look at the back, the hair and everything else is sculpted pretty good on this guy for the fact that he is, after all, a Mego release. Looking at his outfit, he's sporting some rather short-looking sleeves that you can see that they've cut in a couple of different places. One thing that the cuts do help when it comes to moving his arms, for example, that the sleeves not being too tight to his elbows, it doesn't prevent and limit what you can do with the figure's articulation, which of course we'll talk about in a second. So going beyond the point of looking at his plaid shirt, though, he does have the tie at the top there. I don't lose, loosely use the term tie. It's not even so much tie that the top, what they've ended up doing was they stitched this faux leather material right at the very top of his collar, but they only stitched it on one side of what will be his Velcro opening. So if you wanted to, you could take off this kind of corduroy looking apron, untie the very, very large looking knot that they've tied on the back of the figure. I didn't do this. This was Mego. You could technically take this off and then you would be able to unvelcro his shirt. I'm just going to leave it as is because I know I'm not, not going to be able to get it back the way it's looking. And I certainly could not be able to tie a knot like that. That's a rather involved looking knot. But going back to his apron, though, as you can see, it's a darker brown material that I could probably, again, best describe as almost like a corduroy. By the way that, that you can see like the little grooves to, to the material. Um, what they have actually done to also uh, Leatherface, you probably can see it here from the side is they've given him a larger stomach, a larger belly area. This isn't padding. I thought it would have been padding, but instead what it actually is, it's all molded plastic. So they probably have several bodies to choose from, larger, more slightly heftier characters, probably all use the same style of body. And this is what they've used for Leatherface. You can definitely feel it. It's almost like he's got, he's swallowed himself a bag of flour, but it's really a hard and dense plastic in there. And of course, if we move the apron just slightly up, you can see he's sporting some decent looking jeans all the way down to his cowboy boots, which we can lift those all the way up, all the way up, all the way up. And it keeps seeming to go. He has some really long looking cowboy boots. You can see there's the undersole. They almost sculpted the undersole, but it's instead just very smooth plastic. If anybody is asking, does he have some difficulty standing? Uh, the answer to that question is no. If you get his, his feet wide enough stanced, he stands perfectly fine. He doesn't have any issues. Yes, admittingly, I suppose, if you are going to be putting the chainsaw into his hand, you may want to compensate on his legs because obviously the front heavy nature of having him wielding the chainsaw may be more susceptible to having the figure falling over. Let's run through the figure's posability now. His head rotates all the way around. A nice little touch also that I didn't mention before. You can see there, they've painted in the seam line where the mask would be of two pieces. You can see it there also on the other side as well. Really nice touch on their part. But you can rotate the head all the way around. It doesn't, it isn't actually on a ball joint. It's just pegged in place. The arms hinge out both sides. Amigos are a very interesting sort of figure in the sense that, let me just roll up the sleeve to see if I can show you. I didn't want to take the figure's clothing off because, again, I knew I would never be able to get back in place. But essentially what it is, it's a hook system that hooks itself into like an elastic that runs inside the inner body of the, the actual main body here. And those hooks attach to one another. So you do allow the arms to rotate back and forth. I really would not recommend the idea of rotating them all the way around this way because you're going to twist, and I think you're probably going to damage that elastic on the inside. But you can move the arm forward, you can move the arm back, and you can move the arm out. Just do it on a very careful way. He does have a bend in the elbow, and the hands also have a hinge. You can move those back and forth this way. And you can also rotate the hands all the way around as well. He doesn't have any waist articulation necessarily. But his legs do go forward, his legs go back, and you can split the legs ever so slightly. He does have a swivel at the top, but it's essentially just the way that the legs are plugged in place. You can't really see the legs underneath the material, and I'm not going to go ahead and remove the pants on Leatherface. I don't think he's going to like that very much. But he does have a swivel at the top of the thigh, single hinge on the knee, and then he doesn't have articulation in his foot because he's encased inside the boot here, but you can also rotate the feet as well.
So he's a, he's a good looking figure if you like the style of Mego. Mego's not everybody's cup of tea. I had several Mego dolls when I was growing up. I consider them still dolls. And I like the fact that we are getting our like newer characters, somewhat newer, considering the fact this is 2003's Leatherface. But I like it that he's presented here in a Mego style. Is it everybody's cup of tea? Not necessarily, no. But I do think for what it is, and within the boundaries of what you normally would expect to get from Mego, Leatherface turned out to be a decent looking figure, though he does have some difficulty holding his chainsaw. Now, if you're a collector that seeks screen accuracy, then yes, admittingly, I'm sure you're going to find the Mego 8-inch action figure of Leatherface be slightly underwhelming. Screaming, I'm sure, over the course of this review, that looked absolutely nothing like Leatherface. Was that you, by the way, that was doing all that screaming? I would agree in the sense that when it comes to all of these Mego releases, there's always room for improvement. They give you a close enough proximity of what the characters look like. I mean, I look at this and I know it's Leatherface, and judging by the way he's dressed and the colors of his costume, then I know it's the 2003 Leatherface. But yes... I will say there's always room for improvement. The head sculpt could have been better. But I think one of the things that draws me in, the same thing that draws all these adult collectors of Migos, is not the fact that they look like their screen counterparts all the time, but the fact that they remind them of figures that they had growing up. You could ask a lot of collectors of Migos nowadays, what was your first Mego figure or Mego doll? And they could tell you instantly. For me, it was the Christopher Reeve Superman. And I had two of them as a kid. Did it look like Christopher Reeve from the movie? <laughs> no, it didn't. I remember, actually, he had tanned skin. I remember him having really dark skin. But he had the Superman costume, and it was close enough for me as a kid. I flew that thing around the house, and I broke the arm several times. My parents probably got tired of buying the same figure over and over again. Maybe I even had three of them. That's one thing you also have to be careful of when it comes to these Mego releases. They're geared towards kids back in the day, but I think nowadays you still want to be careful when it comes to moving his limbs because he doesn't have the traditional socket joints or hinge joints, and he doesn't definitely have a ball joint in his head. Those are all things that came on later on. They're going back to the basics, and their bodies haven't really changed on these Mego releases. And along with that goes the fact that these bodies all rely on hooks and elastics. If you're not careful and you're moving the arms too frantically or too rough, then of course, yes, the arms are going to break. And I'm sure I had lots of times, and many people can also say too, they had lots of times where they had loose arms that were just shifting inside of the sleeves of their costumes. Now, of course, when it comes to these Mego releases, I'm thrilled for the fact that we're finally getting horror characters. I don't know if it was the case back then, but I know, I mean, to the credit of Mego, they're jumping on board some serious franchises this go around. We're looking at the Leatherface here from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003. I don't know if we'll get ones from the earlier 70s and 80s movies, but we're also getting a Jeepers Creepers Creeper, a Child's Play Chucky, and a Candyman, to name a few. So Migo's really putting out some solid figures. Whether they look like their movie counterparts is another story altogether, but the idea that we're getting still the same style of figures that could have existed back then as figures that get released nowadays, I'm pretty excited, not only as a horror fan, but also a fan of Mego dolls, because I had one as a kid. That poor, broken Superman. Wish I still had that. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 Leatherface. And the question for today's video is, if you had a Mego as a kid, which one was it? I know mine was Superman, but I'd love to read your comments down below in the comments section. If you're new to the channel and you're liking all the content you're seeing, consider the idea of hitting that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on, and come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when new videos will be popping up. And just in case you are somebody like myself that digs Migos, whether you collect them as a kid or you collect them still to this day, there's going to be a whole bunch of Mego reviews lined up and coming soon to this channel. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.